Welcome everyone to Walk on Perspective. I'm your host, Robert Boswell. Thank you so very much each and every week for listening. For those of you who have left reviews and have shared the show, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It truly means the world. I am very excited today to bring to you uh, El Paso, Texas's own Ray Flores. Ray, thank you for joining the show today. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys having me. My pleasure. Uh, The minor faithful uh, didn't have to look far to get familiar with your story. Tell us about what was it like growing up there in El Paso? Uh, Did you always root for the miners? Obviously, they're the local team. Did you uh, always envision going to school there? I know your mom, I think I was reading, is also a graduate of University of Texas at El Paso. So give us an idea, your background. What part of town did you grow up in? Where did you go to high school? Let's start there. Yeah. So uh, uh, El Paso, if you've never been here, it's a, it's, it's its own little bubble, a uh, majority Hispanic community, but I think it's it's really evolving. You know, we got every ethnicity here and it's a beautiful community. Yeah. So I, I lived here my whole life. Uh, I grew up in the lower valley. It's in the east side part of town. It's a, it's a poor area for sure. Close to the to the entry gates to Mexico. And it's a for sure a poor area and a heavy uh, Spanish speaking community. So, you know, all my life, that's what I've been around. Not a lot of glitz and glamour down here, but since I was young, you know, my mom did go to Utah. Uh, my dad had went there for a few semesters, but I've always bled uh, orange and blue, man. I've been a diehard fan since a year old, two years old. I was going to every game, every season. And my dad, I thank my dad, and he he always got season tickets for us every season. So I've never missed a game. All the big games the last, you know, 20 years I've been there, 21 years I've been there. And, uh, you know, I, I've been blessed. And it's, it was it was always a dream of mine for me to – to put on uh, the orange and blue and have that pick on my helmet. And, you know, now that I'm living it out and it, it's become surreal and it's a big blessing, man. I, I can't, it really is a blessing. And, you know, where I'm from, I went to East High School down here in the lower Valley. It's a, it's a it very, a lot of tradition there. It's one of the older high schools in El Paso. And all my families went there, you know, generations of, of Florida's have went there. So without no doubt, there was no doubt in my mind where I was going. My dad, my dad was a well-known football player as well as he has a twin brother. They were, all the family's been a big football family. So it wasn't doubt in my mind where I was going to high school and, you know, I had a good high school career. You know, I did well. And, you know, I always thought being on the, the lower half of the freeway, you know, you're not going to get that much publicity, not get a lot of media time, you know, it's kind of not really sought after. So it's been like that my whole life. It's, it's nothing that I'm not used to. You know, now that I'm at this stage of uh, playing with UTEP, it, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy uh, the cameras and stuff because I've never been around it. But, you know, it, it was it was uh, humble beginnings for sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, now I'm living on my dream. Sounds like a fairy tale of a dream yeah, from yes, the way you laid it out there. Now, yes, did you always know you wanted to play football? Give us an idea. At what stage of life was it that you really started getting serious about football and then the prospect of possibly playing at the next level? Yeah. So, you know, for me, I've always been a, just a big athlete, three sport athlete for sure. You know, I've always loved every sport to be honest, but, you know, growing up was always baseball, basketball, and football, always. And football is always my favorite. I think it's just because it, it's my family. It's ingrained in me. You know, I don't know if I'm going to make any people upset here, but I'm a diehard Cowboys fan too. So, you know, since day one, uh, it's always been my favorite sport. And, you know, growing up, I, I played it by season. You know, fall is always football season. You go to the, the warmer in the summer, spring, it's always baseball season. So that's how it always was until I got to middle school and uh, high school. But, you know, as, as I got older and my skills started, you know, getting better, you know, I, I kind of realized out of all three, you know, football was was my niche and that, that was my thing. But, you know, even in high school, I was I was a three-sport athlete. I led her four years in baseball and football and three in basketball. So. I've always just been an overall athlete, but, you know, for sure, football has my heart, for sure. Okay. Obviously, you were familiar with the school. You probably knew every nook and cranny and building on campus, having grown up on campus with your folks, yes, having sir. met there and gone to all the games. Yes, were were the coaches there, at least while you were going through high school, especially as you got a little older and were an upperclassman and were looking to possibly play at the next level, were they familiar with you? I mean, was there contact there? What were some of those initial conversations like? Yeah, so, you know, like I said, with my area where I'm from, at, you know, Isleta, it's it's rare to even see anybody go to, like, Division Division two level. So, you know, Division one's a big thing, and 
and I did have uh, the old staff that was there before they did my junior year, junior spring and uh, senior season, you know, they did, they did come watch me play and I was hopeful and I was excited because that's all I had at the, at the time. I had a couple of division two offers in division three, but you know, I, I knew, I knew my, my capabilities and my level of play was, was high. So, you know, when I was getting, you know, those, uh, that kind of interest, it was, I was excited You know, I was really hopeful. I was thinking of the best and, no, after a while, you know, they just uh, didn't hear back. Uh, they didn't, didn't know what was going to happen. So that, that's how it ended up happening. And But, you know, they were they had they did show a little bit of love, you know, my junior year and uh, going to my senior year as well. But didn't get that offer as, as much as we wanted it. But it worked out. It worked out at the end of the day. Obviously, that's something that you got to consider heavily with both your, your parents and your family and your loved ones is to consider that offer that you had mentioned with possibly a division two or a division three school versus the opportunity to walk on, or even if it's a preferred walk on at a, yeah. a D one school, was that a hard decision for you to make? Or did you know that no matter what I knew I had what it takes and I'm, I'm going to give it my best go and earn a scholarship and earn playing time and prove everybody wrong at the big platform. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it was, it was tough. You know, I, I think for me, I, I really wanted free school. I really wanted that full ride. I, I didn't want to pay for anything. And, you know, but, but at the end of the day, you know, in the fall when I was going to high school, you know, Saturday, Saturday morning, Saturday midday, Saturday afternoons, I was watching the big dogs, but I was watching, you know, SEC football, watching big Ten football. So, you know, that, that was my dream. You know, I, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be in that pack hundred thousand crowd stadium loud, you know, loud as heck. But when I, when I sat back and, and thought about what I had at the moment, you know, it was it was tough, but at the end of the day, I knew I didn't want that. I knew I wasn't going to be satisfied. You know, at the end of the day, I, I really I knew what I could do, and you know, yeah, there there was some doubt. There was some doubt because you know the I hadn't played at that level, so you know I was like, you know, am I good enough? You know, I questioned myself a little bit before I got to the, before I got to UTEP, but you know, I took that I took that uh that first step, you know, and just gave it all I got, everything I had into it, and you know, it it ended up working out and everything that I, that I dreamt of, you know, it came true. So it became a blessing. Ray, how influential were mom and dad in making that decision? You know, for sure. My dad, you know, my, my dad's the, the big football guy. It's the guy we uh, sit down with every Sunday and Saturday. Uh, no, we, we talked about it and uh, he was, he, he knew how he's always knew, you know, how good I was and what he wanted me to do. And I, I think he was, the one that, you know, told me that, cause you know, for a while I was kind of against the, you know, the walk-on idea that, like, you know, PWO or walk-on, you know, it's like, you know, that's not the scholarship guy. Like I want to be a scholarship athlete, like the guys that come first, you know what I mean? And so, you know, so it was tough. And, you know, my, my dad, you know, he sat down with me and said, you know, like, this is a dream. You're, you're still going to get the opportunity to play and it's still right in front of you. You know, there's just because you don't have the full paid everything given to you, you know, you're going to work for it. You're going to have to work for it, but, the opportunity is there. Don't, don't pass it up. Don't just let it go just because it's not given to you on a silver platter. And, you know, I, uh, I really ran with that and I stuck with that. And I think that was, that's what really helped me to you know, make that decision, make me just uh, go all into, you know, being that walk on. Absolutely. Now were the coaching staff that were there that were having those conversations with you, you're referencing kind of your junior and your senior year of high school, were they recruiting you as a running back or as a wide receiver, or were you one of those uh, labeled as an ATH, really just a all around athlete that could do it all? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, you know, I think, I think in high school, I did, I did do everything in high school as well. I, I played uh, like a slot and wide out, but I think it was more of a running back role. I don't think I had really, I had, a, I had a lot of film, you know, catching the ball, running routes, but I don't think it was definitive of, oh, yeah, he can really do that. So until, you know, I was recruited as running back, and then as, you know, as my years went on here at UTEP and they saw that I could really do it all, and that's how my role evolved as being able to do everything. So, you know, yeah, I think I think it was for sure just as running back in the beginning. So you ultimately – were transitioning from high school ball to you're making the decision, you're going to give it your all, you're going to take the walk-on spot – you're you're getting to campus. Obviously, you know campus intimately. I mean, that part yeah. of it, getting uh, acquainted to a, a new area is. I mean, mom and dad are right down the road. I mean, if you needed to run home and do a load of laundry or just you know stock up on food for the mini fridge, I mean, yes, you sir. had that yes, accessible sir. as opposed to probably three fourths of your teammates. Yeah. But 
there was obviously getting acclimated to the college lifestyle as well as being on your own and just trying to balance time between a college football requirement, which you know is completely different from high school, and then balancing that with your classroom responsibilities as well. Talk to us about, was that a difficult transition to to make for you, or was it pretty seamless? You kind of knew what to expect because you mentioned your dad had played at that level and being right there in town, I mean, easy for you. Yeah, no, most definitely. You know, I think I think school for me hasn't ever been a, a big struggle. You know, my, my dad's a football guy. My mom is the books girl. So, like, you know, ever since I was young, I've always been pushed. And straight, if it's not straight A's, you know, it's not good enough. So I've always been hard on myself when it comes to, when it comes to school. So, you know, going into college, I was a little, um, what, I, what would I say, like, hesitant, I'd say, just because, you know, there's those stereotypes that, you know, college is another level and it's going to be a lot harder. You're going to have to study every day. And so I, I, I would say I, would, I was a little anxious to get on campus and experience it. But, you know, I have an older sister as well who's two years ahead of me. So she, she kind of already told me, you know, it's not going to be that bad. And, you know, once I was there, it, it wasn't it wasn't fast. Like, I think I got acclimated really quick and and it was it was seamlessly and it was it was easy. I, I'd say my first, it was I wouldn't say easy. You know, the workload was more, but I think I, I was able to balance it. I think I have good time management and that's what helped. I got you. Now, when you first started just getting familiar with some of your teammates, especially those who were your age, came in in your class, once they found out that you were the local kid, did everybody kind of lean on you for like, hey, Ray, where, where should we go to eat tonight? Where's a good place to eat? Or where can we go and, and yeah. do this in town? Or, hey, where is the communications building? I have no idea. I mean, were you the point man for all of that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Everyone's asking me, you know, what are the best restaurants in the city? Where's the best place to go on the weekends? And I was the guy pointing the directions, telling them where to go, what to do. And, uh, you know, a lot of people depended on me for that for the first few years. And then after a while, once they figured it out, you know, they got it on their own. But, yeah, for sure, those first few years, I was the point, man. <laughs> now, do you – obviously now you're kind of the elder statesman of the team. Gosh, you've been around for half of yeah. a decade. I mean, I think I know, you, I freshman season was, what, 2017? Yes. Yeah, it is great. Sixth season. That's just crazy. I mean, just think about – everything that has happened that has completely changed the college athletics landscape since you first enrolled. I mean, we're talking COVID, right? I mean, just yeah. what has reshaped our entire world. And the, I mean, the, you, trans, the transfer portal wasn't what it was when I first got to. Right. Got yeah. Name, image, and likeness, it's transfer crazy. portal, uh, pre-COVID, uh, during COVID, and now in this kind of sort of post-COVID world that we're living in. I mean, goodness gracious, college football has completely transformed yeah. under your tenure there in El Paso. It's, it's, it's insane, right? Yeah, no, it's it's most definitely been a roller coaster, man. I think I went through everything. And, and now that I look back on it, it's been five years. It's like, dang, like I really went through, you know, but what was, what was the transfer portal five years ago? There wasn't a transfer portal. It was sit out a year. And then, you know, what was what was like life before COVID and then COVID and COVID happened. And then last season, it's, it's been crazy. It's been a real, and the NIL, like you said, everyone's making millions of dollars. Now it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. And speaking of NIL, I, I didn't see it, hadn't heard if you had been able to broker any type of a deal with any <laughs> local companies, but I can't think of any better representative for a, a lo local company there in El Paso than the young man who was born and bred and lived every day of his life yeah. right there in town, right? Yeah, no, yes, sir. I have a few. I'm working on a few as well. It's, it's been nice. It's a nice, it's a nice thing to be able to represent for the city for sure. No doubt. Now, being the elder statesman, having grown up in El Paso, you're proudly representing not only your state, but your your city that you grew up in. Are you getting recognized more as you go around town? People pulling up while you're filling up with gas and be, hey, Ray, what's up, man? Hey, good job on that two point conversion the other night. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I have I have noticed that, you know, especially this last season, it, it's kind of blew up for me a little bit, I'd say, but not that not that it, it matters a lot to me, but you know, I think my community itself, you know, the Lord, I think I've always been, you know, people knew who I was and they would keep uh, keep following, keep tabs on me because I was the only person out of here to make it that far. So, you know, here, yeah, for sure, it's I've, I've always enjoyed it. But you know, yeah, once I get out of my little bubble, yeah, I I have been uh, approached a little more often. It's it's, it's nice. I enjoy it. I enjoy taking pictures and signing it. It's it's fun. It's exciting. 
<laughs> so you had kind of sparked my interest a moment ago. We were talking about places that you were recommending your teammates go and eat at there in town. Where is the place? If I was coming to El Paso and I'm, I'm talking to you and I'm like, hey, Ray, I want to be wild. Where are you taking me? Wild, I'd have to say, I'm not sponsored. This is not a sponsored post. I would have to take you to track one wings. It's like central and central Paso by the airport. Best wings you'll have in your life. That's the okay. first place I tell everybody to go to. Now, now I, sure. I like I like my wings with a little bit of a kick. You know, I'm I'm big on the spicy food. Are they yeah. am I gonna be yeah, satisfied? The, the, their, their flavor, you gotta get this signature flavor, which is double dipped. It's it's the hot sauce and the honey combination. So you, you'll enjoy it, I promise. Ooh. I do. I do like some hot honey. Would you? Uh, would you consider yourself a foodie of sorts? Oh yeah, of course. Every time I go out of town, we if we go on our trips. You know, when we travel, I'm always looking up the lo best local restaurants. Like I order to my room because you know, I, I need all the local flavors for sure. I'm, I'm a big foodie for sure. Do you cook? Uh, sadly, I, I I struggle. I struggle. And my dad's <laughs> my dad's my dad's the cook of the family, but I I can't. I don't got. I don't got the touch. It's sad. I I don't got it. I cook In some eggs. In, in, <laughs> right. in your defense, though, Ray, I mean, really the first opportunity in a young person's life where they're forced to have to learn to cook is when they yeah. go off and leave home to go off to school. You've really never had to do that, right? Yeah, if you get yeah, hungry, yeah, you just yeah, drive yeah. down the road. You're like, hey, mom, yeah. I, I, I got I to study for my chemistry exam tomorrow morning. Can you fix me up some dinner right quick? Yeah, no, most definitely. House is right here. So it was a hop and a skip, a jump away. So I was always here. <laughs> That's great. Now. Do you have, uh, it's so difficult to keep track of all of the eligibility nowadays because you've got the COVID year. Some people used it. Some people didn't. You've got the red shirt year. You got to carry the one divide by three, find the least common denominator. And through some type of college algebra equation, you figure out how much eligibility you have remaining. Are, are, are you a senior? Are you a red shirt senior? Do you have eligibility left? Give me an idea. Yeah. So th this is my redshirt senior year, for sure. This has to be the last year. I think I do have an injury redshirt, a God willing, nothing happens. But if something were to that, like an injury, uh, I mean, I'd have that. But I pray this is my last season. I mean, not just because okay. I've been here for a while. It's my sixth season, and uh, it's flew by, for sure. It's, it's been like a blink of an eye. I remember I still feel like I'm the little pup first day, first day in the locker room, but I'm really the old man, so. It's, it's exciting. I'm grateful for it, and I'm ready to give it all my last year and hopefully get us a ring. So sure. this this would be – correct me if I'm wrong, Ray. That coming up, this would be your sixth year. Is that right? Sixth season, yes, sir. Goodness gracious. So having – you've grown up, lived your entire life in, in El Paso, growing up, going to all the games, and now this is your sixth year as a student there. I mean, you have to know – Every single person on campus by now, right? Like, you know, like the lunch lady, the parking lot attendant, you know, like yeah. the, the, yeah, the teacher's I I assistant. I mean, goodness gracious. Yeah. I've been here a long time. I know I, I can point to anybody random person. I can tell them where to go on campus. I've been there six years. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. You, I, I tell myself that too sometimes. Do you have your own parking spot? <laughs> no, we got it. We got it. I mean, I do have... We have to buy parking passes for where we park, but I have I do have like a certain spot that I like to park at every day. Uh, you need your own nameplate with your <laughs> own sp spot reserved for the amount uh, of time and effort and energy spent yeah, putting I, into I, not I, only that school and that team, but that city. I, I agree with that. I, I need my own parking space for sure. We need we need somebody listening right now who has that kind of <laughs> influence there at University of, of Texas El Paso. Yeah. They need his own parking spot. <laughs> yes, sir, uh, we do. Uh, getting back onto the field of play on the gridiron, as you're starting to get acclimated as a a younger minor, you start making an impact at least on special teams relatively early. Uh, just looking at some of your stats, I mean, you you played in I think every single game that first year yeah. that you saw action, and then it was like you were shot out of a cannon after that, where you're being used in different ways on offense, on special teams in just about every way. And then the last couple of years, I mean, truly utilized to your fullest potential and skill set. When you first started realizing that, hey, not only you know, was I good enough to make it here and was I good enough to be a meaningful part of this team, but when they first started leaning on you as a real weapon on that team, 
was was that kind of a surreal moment for you? Oh yeah, you know, most definitely. You know, I think for me, it's you know, since my freshman year there, I think I've always made a lot of plays and opened a lot of eyes. And I know I wasn't given the opportunities because I was still the young guy and I still had to prove myself. And you know, I was a walk on. So you know, if you're a walk on, you got to do double the work. You know that. So you know, yeah. So you know, once once I was being utilized and you know, I had my little niche and they were you know telling, making plays, game planning around me. Yeah, I, it didn't hit me at first. And, you know, when I was looking back on it, I was, you know, like, wow, like I was, I was really, you know, the, the focus, I was the main guy, you know, they were, they were game planning around me, you know, how are we going to get him the ball for these plays and these plays? And, and it was special. It, it felt like, you know, for me, you know, when you're in high, like the glory days in high school and you're the guy, you know, sometimes you get the full glimpses of that, of what, what that felt like. And that's what it felt like for me. You know, I felt like, you know, I was the guy again, they're looking, how do we get him the ball? How do we make, help him make the plays? So it was it was special, man. You know, I, it was it's been special. You know, this past season was probably the, the finest season I've had since I've been there, and it was just full of blessings and you know, big moments. This last season you mentioned was just quite a roller coaster ride. I mean, between the the senior day win over Rice, and then going to a bowl game. I know it didn't yeah. end up how you'd wanted, but I mean, yeah. in nearby New Mexico, going to mm-hmm. Albuquerque and playing in a big time bowl game. Talk to us about that. What was that experience like? And I guess as kind of a leader on the team and one of the older players on the team, I mean, were were you put in a position to where all of the younger guys really kind of had to lean on you during that that whole preparation? getting ready for the bowl because at that point right like exams are over like there's no school there's yeah. not that normal structure and then you're all of a sudden whisked away to a city where you're just preparing on football only and everybody thinks of it as kind of this this vacation or this yeah. trip birth whereas like where you're coming from you're one of the older guys did you really take on that responsibility of like no 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 like this is a business trip and we're 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 not here to play like the we're we're here to work yeah, yeah, no, for sure. You know, I think uh, for me, you know, being there, that was that was going. It was my fifth season. You know, I, I you you hear the guys that have came before you, and you know that that team that went to the bowl. I think it was I want to say twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen, something around there. That was the last team to make the bowl. So you, you've seen that. You know, I went to go watch that game, and you know, you you hear glimpses of guys who played with those guys. You know, five, six, eight years ago, and. And so you just hear rumors, you know, what it's like to be in a bowl game and you finally get the opportunity to be one, you know, yeah, we're excited. You know, we've never been there. It's exciting, but yeah, I, I think I did. I had to kind of, we all did, you know, all the older guys and the leaders kind of settle the team down and, you know, remind them that, you know, the job's all finished and we need to still put in the work and we got a big game, you know, Fresno state was a, they were, they had a really great season. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't no uh, slouch of an opponent. So yeah, most definitely we, we did have to, trying to keep them locked in but I, I think my team did a did a great job of you know really staying focused I don't think that was a big problem I think everybody knew what the job was and they really really gave it their best foot forward and put it gave it all we had that that uh that night on that field going back I know we're kind of jumping around chronologically but as an underclassman and as you started to garner more attention and you had earned more and more responsibilities from the coaching staff once they realized how they could utilize your talents. Had had you been approached by anybody with the coaching staff about potentially being put on scholarship? Uh, yeah. So, you know, I think so. Like my redshirt, my first year there it was it was the year you know the old staff got fired mid season, so it was really a weird year. We had an interim coach, and then finally. Uh, Coach Samuel got introduced after the season. So that year was, you know, I, I feel like that was really a blip year for me. I didn't really, I didn't do much. It was just an odd year. So, you know, that first spring was my first, you know, opportunity with the new staff and to show what I got. So, you know, that red shirt, that red shirt freshman season, it was just uh, pure special teams. You know, I was special team soldier was on all, all four, all four phases. And so, you know, I did practice at back, you know, I think towards the end of the season, we had some guys banged up. So I was, I was, you know, the third guy in the rotation, but I never, never saw, I didn't see the field that year running back. So, you know, my sophomore season I had a really good fall camp and everything was just going my way. You know, I, I, they, I found my role, you know, at running back and it was a lot of third downs and a lot of, you know, using my hands. So, you know, I took it around with it. I know we, I know I had two upperclassmen in front of me. So, you know, they knew, you know, they had, they had the experience over me. So, you know, I was making, I was making plays. I was in the game and on practice and I was doing the right thing and being the best player I could be. So, you know, around then I was, I was kind of, you know, 
not that I really thought about being on scholarship because I was so focused on the season, but I was, it came, it came, you know, came and went in my thoughts and I was, I was hopeful for it. I was looking forward to it. And, you know, I had talked to Coach Nemo before, you know, we actually, I, just me and him, we sat down. I told him, hey, Coach, you know, I want to talk to you about, you know, putting me on scholarship, you know, and what, uh, what else do you think I need to do or what do you think I need to work on? And he told me, like, like, you're the next one on the list. We're just waiting for one to open up. You've done everything you could. You just, just keep buffing your butt every day. You know, and I, you know, that, that conversation with Coach Dunwood, you know, meant a lot to me because, you know, he was completely honest and blunt with me. And I, I kept that and ran with it and, and finished that season really, really well. And then sure enough, you know, going into that next spring, you know, I was, I was on scholarship and the blessings came and I, I was, it was just blessed, man. I was, I was, looked back four years ago where I was, didn't know if I was going to still play college football, didn't know what I was going to do with my life. You know, I, I didn't know, questioning if I was even good enough. And here I was, you know, had my role on the team and one of the best players. I did everything. and. It, it just now I'm um, starship happy dream come true. The, the, a true fairy tale uh, as yeah. you're describing it there. We call so. your story or ones like yours, the Holy grail of walk on success stories. I mean, as a local kid growing up, parents went to the school, dad played there. You went to all of the games, idolized the team and walked on, earned every inch you got. You weren't given anything. And then ultimately culminates with having earned a scholarship to represent. We talked about it earlier, not just your state, but but your hometown, I mean, yeah. a true fairy tale of a story. I, I want to know a little bit more, paint me a picture, right? How was it presented? Was it in a team setting? Did the coach just pull you aside in a meeting in his office? And did you see it? Was it, did you see it coming? I mean, I, I want all the details. Yeah. I want you to break it down for us. And then yeah. afterwards, you know, who, who was the first person you called? Paint us a picture. So, you know, for me, I, I don't think Coach Jim was really, you know, the big, you know, the, like the videos on Sports Center. So I had, I had talked to Coach Jim before, like that season, during that season, he told me that. So I, I was kind of hopeful. And, you know, I was, it was, it was like mid December, late December, about to be January after Christmas. And I, I, was, I just remember I was on the couch. We're off already, but I was still working. I think I just finished working out in conditioning. So I was on my couch on my phone. I got an email regarding, you know, uh, payment for school. And I was like, oh, let me see. Let me see what it is, right? So sure enough, opened my account, went to the payment, and you know I saw it was negative. Blah blah. blah which man, I didn't owe money. I was gonna make money, and I, you know, I was I was surprised. I was you know what is this? Yeah, let me get on my laptop. So I got on my laptop and I looked at what it said it was, and you know it said you said football scholarship. You know, I was oh my god, I, I couldn't believe. It. I, I was not. I didn't you know I wasn't emotional or anything, but I was you know I was excited. I, I not that I couldn't believe it, but it's like the dream came true. Everything hit me finally. You know I I did it. I'm a scholarship athlete now. I'm a scholarship football player. So, you know, sure enough, got my phone, called my dad. You know, he was excited. I called my mom. They were crying. It was, it was, it was a good day. It was, it was a really good day. All right, let's back up a second, Ray. So you found out for the first time that you've been part of, put on scholarship when you were checking a possible yeah. bill for tuition? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not even like looking at like a video of like somebody telling you like it's just a number on the screen did you yeah. think it was a glitch at first where you just yeah, i mean how, I, I did how many times did you have to double take and look at this and be like is this oh, what i think it means yeah i refreshed the screen three times to make sure it wasn't, it wasn't messing. <laughs> yeah and, and sure enough you know i was once i got on my laptop and i read what it said i was like dang like it's not a glitch it's not a joke it's for real i'm, I'm on scholarship so you so yeah. you stop, obviously the first phone calls you said are to your parents. At what point did you call your head coach and then make sure, like, hey coach, like this is for real, right? This isn't a joke and like I'm not yeah. this isn't a glitch in the system, right? Yeah, no, I didn't I didn't call him. We ended up going back, I think, in January, like two weeks later. So that first day I went back, I went straight to his office, you know, gave him a hug and told him, Thank you so much, Coach. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you know what you just did, but you know, you, you know, thank you for making me a scholarship athlete. And you know, Rent told me I deserved it give me a hug. And, you know, that was since then it's, it's been great. That is incredible. This is a walk on perspective first and finding yeah. out about having earned a scholarship by looking yeah. at a negative yeah. balance on his school bill. <laughs> that is, yeah. that is different. Yeah. I love it though. That, that is uniquely yeah. your story. And that is tremendous. Very good. Uh, again, transitioning, trying to get us back on the rails here, back towards actual ball on the field. You're going into your last final season, barring your medical red shirt that you said if you needed to use it, you could. This is very likely your last season of college football. What, if anything, 
are you currently working on? Because obviously you've been at this for so many years now. You've, you've had so many different people who have been working with you, trying to grow your game, work on your strengths, work on your weaknesses. What, if anything, this off season, are you trying to work on to make sure that you are prepared mentally, physically, and, and emotionally for the grind of a season? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think for me, I do feel it, you know, in my body. You know, I, I know I'm, a, I'm an older man, so I feel it in my bones and my, my joints. It's a little achy, but going to the season, I think uh, I'm, I'm focusing on, on the entirety of my game. I think I've really developed in every aspect, you know, my route running, a receiver, my cutting at back and my vision. So I think for me, I, I'm focusing a lot more, you know, I think because running back for me, it's, it's my, uh, it's my, it's my whole, it's my homegrown position. It's what I've played since I was, you know, in peewee football. So it, it's natural for me. I don't really got to think when I play, but, you know, receiver, I, I've played it, but now at this level, you know, you got to know the coverages, you got to know how to break their route off and you know, well at the depth. So I really took, you know, a lot of time and, and effort into that because route running is truly an art. And I've learned that from, you know, being out with the guys and watching, you know, people that I look up to. So I, that's like right now, that's what I'm really been focusing on, you know, is getting my routes nice and crisp and just being consistent. You know, I want to, I know this past season I was, I was pretty consistent, but I want to be, I want to make those big plays. I want to make the big catches. And I want to be the every down guy, you know, if it's not out wide and they bring it back to the backfield, I want to be able to get that 20 yard game. You know what I mean? So right now it's for sure a lot of, uh, Route running and stuff, and then also I'm uh, doing a lot of uh, cutting drills and make sure my footwork's good for uh, running back as well. For a lot of teams, when they're looking at the upcoming schedule in the fall, a lot of times you got to come up with your <laughs> own motivation to get through the grind of fall camp, summer workouts, those summer yeah. conditioning, those early morning lifts. You don't have to get that added motivation looking at y'all's early schedule. You look on there, so yeah. week one, North Texas, the an in-state school, they're going to be a tough opponent. And then in week two, Norman, Oklahoma, to take on the Sooners. If that doesn't get you ready to get in there and do those squats at 6 a.m. during the heat of summer, I don't know what can. I mean – yeah. What a beast of a start, North Texas and Oklahoma. That's got to get you jacked up, though, right? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, it's – I'm excited. You know, I – we played Texas COVID year, and, and we didn't get the full experience. You know what I mean? It was limited, limited capacity. So, this is going to be their first game, our second game. It's going to be rocking. It's going to be loud, and I'm excited. I'm excited, man. Uh, most definitely, it's, it's giving us the juice to get to the summer for sure because – you know, the summers in El Paso would be uh, those two two p.m. Uh, station drills is one hundred and twenty on the turf. It's it's something else, but you know, Oklahoma's giving it to us, so we're we're excited. Most definitely, we're ready. I know you will be. Now, in addition to your football requirements, your off-season strength and conditioning. I mean, you've got to be doing something in school. I mean, you at this point, you're probably working on like your fourth degree, right? <laughs> I mean, I saw. I think your your original major was in engineering, right? Yeah, I got my uh, ba- my bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering, and I'm about to finish my master's this fall in the same thing, mechanical engineering as well. That's tremendous. Balancing yeah. an engineering course load with what everybody knows that you have to commit to with football between practice, meetings, nutrition, mandatory study hours, yeah. all of that. I mean, it, that's no joke, right? Like engineering, yeah. that is quite demanding what are you looking to possibly do obviously engineering right but is there a subcategory of engineering that you're wanting to get into after your career is inevitably over whether that's after college or after the next level I mean at some point you'll have to hang the cleats up yeah yeah no most definitely uh as much as you know I I still am giving give give, give it all on the line this season and hopefully you know get a shot at playing professionally professionally but if you know if that doesn't work out you know, at school, I'm also a research intern for the aerospace center because, you know, what I want to go into is the aerospace industry. And, you know, my dream dream job, of course, would be uh, NASA. And if not, also uh, Lockheed Martin as well. They're both uh, two big aerospace companies, you know, your rockets, your jets, fighter jets, airplanes. So that's all stuff. That's uh, that's, that's, my, that's my stuff, too. If it's not football. That's what I like. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. When your middle school guidance counselor 
told you, Ray, you need to shoot for the moon. You really took that literally, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I didn't want to cut myself short. It's <laughs> fantastic. Well, as we're kind of closing it up here, Ray, I know you probably know this from having watched every single one of our previous episodes, right? I know you've watched every single one in yeah, its entirety all the way through. I'm kidding, obviously. But we at Walk On Perspective, we always like to have our guests finish with their school's rallying cry. I mean, at, at, at UTEP, is it just go minors or is it minor up? Right? What would it be? And he picks up, baby. Always picks up. Picks up. All right. I want you to give me your best picks up that you've ever given. All right. I got you. Picks up, baby. Let's go. Get that picks up. Picks up. Go miners. I love it. Ray, where can our listeners continue to follow you on social media throughout the remainder of your college eligibility, as well as what you get into, whether it's professionally in football or professionally in engineering? Yeah, uh, so my Instagram, at Ray Ray, but it's spelled R-E-Y-R-E-Y-Y, -E -E -Y, and then an underscore at the end. You can find me there. Profile picture's a big uh, UTEP football roster photo, so you can't miss it. And then my Twitter, just at Ray, R-E-Y, because people always put R-A-Y. R-E-Y, Flores, underscore, that's it. You guys, you guys can find me there. Fantastic. Well, Ray, thank you so very much for your time. You've been very gracious, and I truly enjoyed getting to know you and your story. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bob. I really appreciate you guys having me today. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day.